you. The Google Map. You have the number there, Your Honor. I guess probably quicker. I know. Well, I mean, I guess I can Google it for you. I mean, I'll do it, but I thought maybe you had something in the file. No, I'm just, I was indicating he's up there on the, um, he's waiting to get admitted into the meeting here. For this file. Yes, he has Kimberly Stanley versus Daryl Stanley. Is Kimberly Stan Mr. Stanley, is Kimberly Stanley a family member of yours? Yes, Your Honor. Yes. Okay, I don't, I don't know. I don't know where this attorney would be located, so I'll have to do a little up there. So, here, well, I mean, I'll let him in. Hopefully, it's not a bomb, a Zoom bomb. I don't know what it was on your I believe I do recall Mr. West. Now you recall Mr. West? Okay. I didn't recognize the name at first, Your Honor. Okay. Does somebody have a phone out in here? I just heard some music. Is somebody, everybody's phone should be on silent and not on it while court's in session. All right. So we are going on the record the matter of the state of Michigan versus Rosemary Caruso, 231778. And, um, Officer Sparway, I'm going to ask you to please raise your right hand. Do you solemnly swear from the testimony about to give this matter to be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes. I, okay, thank you. And if you could please state and spell your first and last names for the record, Officer. Yes. Officer A C A D E Sparway B A R W I G. Okay, that's C A D E B A R W I G. The, the audio isn't fantastic right now. It doesn't appear to be. Okay, you may proceed on the warrant. On Monday, July 17, 2023, at approximately 21.05 hours, Officer Cox, who was off duty, observed a blue Dodge Ram bearing Michigan plate 5. Nora Mary Henry 98. Officer Cox observed the Dodge Ram turning off of Lincoln Street in the city of Wyandotte to drive eastbound Goddard. When the Dodge Ram turned onto Goddard, it turned directly in front of Officer Cox, cutting him off. Officer Cox followed the Dodge Ram and observed multiple traffic violations and contacted Officer A. Grove, who was on duty at the time working with the city of Wyandotte Police Department. Officer Cox relayed to Officer Agro that the Dodge Ram was now northbound on Biddle from Goddard. Officer Agro observed the blue Dodge Ram in the left lane of Biddle stopped at the St. John's traffic signal. Officer Agro indicated the Dodge Ram had a defective equipment violation. When the traffic signal turned green, the Dodge Ram turned to the Shoppers Valley Market located at 750 Biddle in the city of Wyandotte. Officer Agro followed the Dodge Ram into the parking lot and initiated a traffic stop by utilizing his emergency lights. Officer Agro observed a female with blonde hair exit the driver's door. The female is, the female is later identified as the defendant, Rosemary Nancy Caruso. While speaking with Caruso, Officer Agro observed several clues of intoxication as she had an odor of intoxicants and her speech was slurred. Officer Agro asked for Caruso's identification Caruso searched her purse for an extended period of time and, when, and was unable to locate it. Caruso's identification was later found in the same purse by officers. Officer Agro asked Caruso to conduct standardized field sobriety tests. Caruso agreed to attempt the test. Throughout the test, Caruso showed several clues of intoxication. Officer Agro asked Caruso to submit to a portable breath test and she agreed to take the test. The results of the PBT were 0.23. Officer A. Grove placed Caruso under arrest for officing while intoxicated. Caruso was transported to the Wyandotte Police Department where she became disorderly and refused to cooperate with the book procedure. While Officer Gardaki was reading Caruso her chemical test rights from the DI-177 form, Caruso continuously interrupted. When Caruso was asked to submit to a blood test, she refused. Officer A. Grove completed a search warrant for Caruso's blood it was, and it was signed by Magistrate Mastro Giacomo. Caruso was transported to the Wyandotte Henry Ford Hospital where registered nurse Nick Travis entered with the blood kit. Registered nurse Caruso's left arm, one at 22, 18 hours, and the other at 22, 19 hours. 
The blood kit was sealed and sent to the MSP lab, and Caruso was transported back to the YDOT jail. Caruso's lien shows two prior OWI convictions, August in 2013 in Detroit and October 2005 in Woodhaven. All right, thank you, Hans. And Mr. Brady, what is the family offense charge were committed? That there's probable cause we defend to commit those offenses. And counsel, your appearance, please. Good morning, Your Honor. Christopher Secretary, I'm going to find consent to the matter here via Zoom. As to the arraignment, I'm going formal reading. My client stands here. All right, thank you. And Ms. Caruso, please stand up and state your name for the record. Hi, Rosemary Caruso. All right, thank you. <clears throat> the court will wait the formal reading. Ma'am, you do have the right to have an attorney. If you can't afford one, the court will, will appoint one to represent you. And in fact, you've had an opportunity to meet with an attorney today, correct? Yes, ma'am. All right, you have the right to be presumed innocent until proven guilty beyond a reasonable doubt. You have the right to have a trial by a judge or by a jury. You also have the right to remain silent. Anything you say orally or in writing being used against you in court. Do you understand those rights? Yes, Your Honor. All right, the court's going to enter plea of not guilty. You may have scheduled this matter for probable cause conference on July 27th at 9.40 a.m. And counsel has two bonds. Your Honor, as to bond, my client indicates she will appear in all future court dates. Obviously, she's a position. However, she does reside with her two children, ages 17 and 18. Uh, she is on public assistance. We would respect the request of leniency this honorable court can consider. Thank you, Judge. All right, thank you. <clears throat> Ma'am, you don't work? Not right now because I've been having liver appointments and uh, stuff like that. I got a lot of health issues going on right now. And I'm currently, I blow every single day also um, for Southgate. And it was just a mess up. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Let's back up for a moment. You're on what every day for Southgate? She's on probation, Your Honor, in Southgate for a disorderly person. She was scheduled to get off in August, but she indicates she blows um, for alcohol daily. Oh, okay. Was alcohol involved in your matter in Southgate? I'm sorry, I didn't hear you. Your matter in Southgate, was alcohol involved in that? Yes, Your Honor. And so, I'm sorry, you don't work because you have health issues? Yeah, I got a lot of health issues going on right now. I do clean houses, um, but they it's all, like, pretty much cash that I get. And I just wanted to say that I'm really well, sorry. Then you're, so then you work. Hold on, please. So then you're working. Here and there, yes. Okay. And so, ma'am, your health issues must be must not be that significant if you're able to do physical labor and clean houses. Yeah, I got liquor failure right now. I got um, some other stuff going on with my seizures and stuff like that. So, but I still continue to take my medicine and, you know, clean a couple houses and do what I have to do. And so, ma'am, I'm going to venture a presumption that your liver issues and your seizures are from alcohol consumption, correct? Yes. Okay. And so just so you're aware, there are many people that have the same conditions you have that still work. I don't know how you support yourself and your two children. Right now, I'm on a disability also, Your Honor. Okay, you don't have that listed on here either. Oh, I'm sorry about that. And how long have you been receiving disability? How long have I been receiving it? Yes. About seven years. All right, and you're currently on probation for an alcohol-related offense. This is your third alcohol-related offense. And um, even though you're blowing every day with the 28th district court, that uh, doesn't seem to be enough to prevent uh, this incident from happening again. The court's um, taking into account the fact that you have a, you're currently on probation. This is your third alcohol-related offense. The court's going to indicate a $10,000, 10% bond 
Why? In the, event, in the event you post bond, you're not to be released without an alcohol tether. You're not to possess or consume any alcohol or drugs unless prescribed. Honor, excuse me, ma'am. Yes? Is there any way that uh, you could give me a personal bond? I don't have $1,000 right now. And today's, I'm yeah. going to spend with my kids. It's my birthday and I want to be sober. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, today is your birthday. <laughs> oh, well. Happy birthday. But no, the court's not amending your bond. You're currently on probation where you're not allowed to consume any alcohol. It's alleged you've consumed alcohol at a high level, I may add, at a 0.23 is what it's alleged at this point anyway. And um, this is your third alcohol-related offense. So for the safety of the public and yourself, the court's indicating a monetary bond and an alcohol tether so that that may be some um, motivation to follow the court's orders. The court will mark your file medical. And we'll see you next Thursday. Thank you, Judge. Thank you. All right. All right, we are going on the record in the matter of the City of Wyandotte versus William Hyden, 231697. And appearance, counsel? Your Honor, good morning. Richard T. Serrano, P3382, appearing on behalf of with my client, Mr. Hyden, who is presently in Wayne County Jail in custody. Please state your name, sir. Please unmute, Mr. Hyden. You need to unmute first, sir. William Hyden. All right, thank you. And today's the date scheduled for the for the pretrial in this matter. <clears throat> Counsel, you an opportunity to speak to the prosecuting attorney? Yes, I have, Your Honor. We have pre-trial the matter. My client is going to plead guilty as charged. I'm advising of his rights and raised for the court's examination. All right, sir, please raise your right hand. You sound me, sir, from the testimony about to give this matter the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Yes, I do. All right, thank you. <coughs> Bless you. And bless you. And you have to count one trespass, <clears throat> sir. How do you plead? Guilty. Guilty. And you've gone over your rights of rights with your attorney, correct? Excuse me. You've gone over your advice of rights with your attorney. Is that correct? Yes, ma'am. And you understand all of those rights. Yes, ma'am. You also understand that by entering into a plea, you'll be waiving some of those rights, specifically your trial and appellate rights. Yes, ma'am. You also understand the possible penalty as a result of your plea, correct? Yes, ma'am. And knowing all that, you still want to continue with your plea? Yes, ma'am. Has anybody promised you anything, threatened you, or coerced you in any way for you to enter into a plea? No. no. And counsel, if you can please run to your client. Mr. Hyde, can you hear me? Yes, sir. On July 6, 2023, we're in the city of Wyandotte. Yes. And at that time, did you uh, uh, stay in, and sleep in and take up residence, more or less, in a shed belonging to another person? Yes. And you did not get prior permission, did you? No. I'm satisfied. The court is also satisfied the plea is knowing, voluntary, and factually accurate. The court will accept your plea to count one of trespass, and we will schedule this matter for sentencing. Your Honor, the court pleases my client's been in custody continuously since this happened. I don't think he has anything else pending. Is the court disposed to sentence today? Well, Counsel, I don't have an updated criminal history, and um, so... Can we talk about his release? Uh, and he refused to fill out the paper for an attorney back on July 7th. So I don't even have any financial information. I, I don't have anything on him. And so I'm not prepared to pass sentence on your client when I don't have a full understanding of your client's um, history and his needs. So we're going to schedule this matter for sentencing. <clears throat> On August 9th, 
I'm going to lose all my jobs. Yes, I am. At 9 a.m. We could, we could maybe do, we could, just a moment, sir, just a moment, sir, we could maybe do August 2nd, counsel, you're here that day. Whatever the court pleases, Your Honor. All right, well, we won't be able to put any more on that day, so we'll do August 2nd. August 2nd, what time? 9 a.m. All right. Will we address the issue of bond, Your Honor? Um, yes, counsel. The court indicated a $5,000, 10% bond, GPS, tether, no house arrest, not to possess or consume any alcohol or drugs unless prescribed. And the basis for that was because your client does um, have, uh, does not have an address listed, indicating he was homeless, and he um, does have a criminal history of some sort, um, specifically trespassing. Prior. And, um, Your Honor, I just wanted to say that is true. He is homeless, but he tells me if he were released, he, he has somewhere to go now. I think he has an address to give you. And uh, he, he, he tried to mention he has three part time jobs. He feels he's, if not lost them already, but he's certainly going to lose them if he remains uh, any longer in custody. So he cannot. Support himself, he could not earn income without these jobs. And Your Honor, we would hope the court would allow him to be released at least on a GPS tether. What, what are the three jobs that you have, sir? Like I said, like I said before, in front of you, I work for Sheldon Smiley Monday through Friday. I do concrete work and I cut five different people's grasses and why not? Okay. Uh, and like I said, I, is that you were living in a vacant house that you didn't have permission to be in. I understand this. And like I was and saying, so where, who, did, who is it that you're supposed to leave, that you say you can stay with? Um, his name is Sheldon Smiley. He buys houses to flip them. He was in a process, like I told you the last time I was there, I was meeting him that Friday to get keys for a house on North Drive to where I was going to be staying inside that house with all the tools so no one would steal the tools. I don't know the exact address of the house. I just know that it's on North Drive and Wyandotte. Okay, well, sir, you the court, um, you have to have an address before you can even be released with the tether. So I know one of the um, addresses of the house we're working on is 667 North Drive. And the other house that we'll be working on is right across the street from that. That's why I, I don't know the exact address. I know the one address that the house we're working on now. So I've been you trying to get the address. And now you know the address. What's that? Oh, I told you before. The one address we're working on is 667 North Drive. While we were working on this one, he was in the process of buying the other one. Okay, so how do you know that he's told, actually purchased it yet? He told the last time I talked to him is that he purchased it. And that's why I was going to meet him on Friday to where we can move the power tools over into that house. And I was going to be given the keys to that house to where no one will be able to break in and steal it because I would be there with the power tools. And how long have you worked for Mr. Smiley? I've been working for him for a year. And so you live in houses that he, that he purchases and fixes up to flip? Is that what you do? Sometimes, yeah. If, there's, if we have to have the power tools there, yes. Otherwise, I, st I was staying with friends, just doing what I could. All right. Well, the concern the court has is that um, Mr. Hyden... Um, can't be located if he does if he fails to appear for court. The court will reduce the bond to be 2,500, 10% counsel, but um, I'm not amending it to be a personal bond. Well, I'm going to resolve my job then. So that's all I know. Conditions are continued. Thank you. Thank you. Um, um, but we, let's go off the record for a moment. <clears throat> um, 
Wayne County Jail, um, where Mr. Hyden.